As a game developer, when making your own game, it is stressful to make sure your game doesn't become bad. This is the second video about me explaining what makes games bad. The first topic we're going to talk about is series expectation. This is when a company expects people to enjoy the game regardless of if it is good or not since its previous title or titles were hits. Sometimes, hardcore fans do still purchase and like the games, but the majority of the audience does not. This scenario has happened many times before, but the example I will use is of the Fallout series. The developers of a series as large as this learned that their fans won't accept low quality work, and Bethesda has been struggling with this for a while. Fallout has had many entries ever since 1997 when the first title was released. Fallout 1 was widely acclaimed and gained recognition as one of the best role-playing video games at that time. When tasked with making a sequel, Obsidian, who were the developers of Fallout at that time, created Fallout 2, which closely resembled the first one. They used a lot of the same assets and the same engine to elaborate on the story of the Fallout universe in a safe way. No change in the style, graphics, or a majority of the mechanics, so everything that made Fallout 1 a good game stayed with the next one. Obsidian then went on to create two more games in the series, Fallout Tactics, Brotherhood of Steel, and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. Although the names sound similar, they are very different games. Fallout Tactics was a knockoff of the main series, per se, with updated graphics capabilities and major gameplay changes. Brotherhood of Steel is where things get interesting though. Since Fallout has been a top-down point-and-click PC game since its release, nobody ever thought about porting its titles to a console. Implementing the same style of gameplay with a controller in mind would be clunky and require a complete overhaul. So, instead of porting an existing game to the current console generation, the development team started work on another knockoff title dedicated just to the consoles. By the end of development, Fallout was turned into a third-person, real-time beat-em-up game. It also had of-era 3D graphics and more major changes to the game. When people played the final product though, the combat was unfair, boring, and not fun. The only people who enjoyed the game, or at least defended it, were hardcore fans. Otherwise, reviews were really bad. After failing, Obsidian lost the race to Fallout and Bethesda acquired it. One more time Fallout made this mistake is with Fallout 76. After 3, New Vegas, and 4, Bethesda thought they could make anything and fans would accept it due to past positive reception. The game was extremely buggy and had many other problems. After release and many bug fixes, they were actually somewhat right as many people have started playing and enjoying it. Talking about a big corporation like Bethesda, another problem with making bad games is companies rushing development for a release date. This usually doesn't happen with indie studios, mainly large studios, since they have contracts, holidays, competition, and many other factors. Deadlines set by these companies never include any problems that may come up, or additional development needed to polish the game. If you ever hear any stories from veteran developers, you will know about crunch period. This is when developers are rushed to finish the game near the end of development and are cutting features and working extra just to get it done for the deadline. A lot of recent games from big studios have flopped, or almost did, because of rushing and this corporate greed. Now the final topic I want to talk about is basically two things combined. Listening to community feedback and fixing your game after release. First, listening to the community that is following the development of your game is extremely important for multiple reasons. They will most likely be the first people to play your game, and any reviews made by them will reflect to the outside audience. If the game is too challenging for most people, then tone down the difficulty a bit or add some settings to change that. Just make sure you don't listen to the vocal minority. If one person says, remove the RPG, for example, but everyone else thinks it is the best part, then just don't remove it. You can't make everyone happy and satisfied with your game. There will always be someone who doesn't enjoy your work or complain about things that others don't. And the next part is fixing your game after release. If your community notices bugs or problems in your game, you should listen to them and fix it. Patches aren't the only thing you can do after publishing though. If you want to add more content or create DLCs, downloadable content, you can do so. When you make updates, your community will realize that you are actively working on the game and improving it. Also, adding more content keeps the game interesting, like adding new champions to League of Legends or Apex Legends. 
Thank you for watching the sequel to What Makes Bad Games. If you enjoy my content and want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. And until next time, goodbye.